Hi guys, welcome back to Sulandia. Um, I've been working a ton, a ton on the deer. Um, the last time I showed you guys a video of this whole process, I was framing in the head. And as you can see, I've gone well beyond that. Um, the head, the face, the entire body is completely framed in. And I've been gun covering it with a skin made entirely of little animal shaped cutouts. This is for a, a school where they're going to be teaching pre-K and kindergarten level kids about nature and the environment. So uh, I thought this would be an appropriate theme for them and uh, that, that was part of the commissioning process um, was the, the school giving their input of what they um, think would work good for them. And, um, this was a, the design I came up with, and they approved it and hired me to do it. So that's what's happening here. This process is extremely time consuming. I'm going to show you a little bit about how that works. Each piece has to be individually shaped, contoured to the frame by hand. So um, I've been working on this. It's I've still got like this part of the lower leg to do um, to make this entire side be completed. And I've been working on it for like four days now. <laughs> so I, I greatly underestimated the amount of time this was going to take me. Um, so when I mapped out my commission on the calendar um, to meet my deadline, um, I'm really glad I built in some wiggle room because I'll be using every single ounce of it to complete this project. But anyway, so to show you what's going on here, let's see, get this moved around. Again, people who do watercolors, not so much of the heavy moving stuff. Okay, so. Yeah, I actually finished the whole head on this side, but you can see the rest of it is still just this open framework. And um, at this point in the process, um, my pickiness in making the frame, constructing it, being picky about the shape and the welds um, is really coming into play. Because as you'll see while I'm working, there's going to be times where I'm actually going to have to bang on this pretty hard. Like I might have a piece on here that I've partially shaped um, and I've got it welded on in a few spots, but I have to actually whack on it really hard to get it shaped to the frame for the final shaping. And if this wasn't really sturdy underneath, um, I wouldn't be able to do that. So time to suit up. It's gotten so hot and humid, I just cannot take wearing the welding shirt anymore and have switched off to my apron, which is way cooler, but leaves my arms pretty exposed. I get all kinds of burns on them. And uh, the welding is pretty bad for your skin too. It's got all those UV rays in it. It's pretty much like going to the beach on the sun, basically. So I, uh, I spray down pretty regularly with sunscreen, which I tell myself does something. <laughs> but um, I actually ordered some welding sleeves now that are just, they're leather sleeves only, no shirt, just the sleeves. And those should come in next week, so hopefully That'll help and I won't sweat to death. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Ready to start actually working. Um, I've got about 15 different animal and leaf shapes I'm working with. Um, and it's kind of like fitting a puzzle together a little bit. I'm going to, I'm gonna start right here, I think. Um, this might be, kind of hard for you guys to see on just the framework, 
but this shoulder muscle kind of curves in like this and then the leg begins. And why this process is so difficult is right in this area you've got a bunch of different curvatures going on. There's the curve of the leg like this, there's the curve of the deer's shoulder muscle like this, and also a curve going this way. And a flat piece of metal like this that's hard, it's not like a piece of fabric where you can just sticker it on and it really only wants to bend one direction. Like I couldn't take this and bend it like this and then bend it like that. Um, it's just not the way it works. Um, so it's a little bit more complicated than it looks. Um, okay, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this from there, but I'm going to start on this little piece right here where the leg joins to his body. And this is a little trick I've picked up along the way using chalk to help me uh, get my contour lines on the piece before I start bending. So I'm going to need the squirrel's body to bend this way to wrap around the leg. But right where it bends to the body, I'm going to need a different curvature to begin. So I know I'm going to need this to bend this way. Okay. But right here, I'm going to need this part to bend out this way. So now I come over here to my vise. And I use this mallet with a plastic end on it so that I don't nick up the steel every time I'm working with it. And I'm just going to start pounding on it. And the trick, the trick is, I don't even know if you guys can still see me, but it's hard to do this wrong-handed. Um, I'm going to keep bending as I'm moving it through the vise. You can tell I did too much on one. And the trick is you want to get a nice somewhat smooth bend, curve in the, in the piece, a curvature. So it avoids having a ton of little crimp marks all along the whole thing, or little that look like little folds. You want it to look somewhat smooth, which is a little difficult in this hand forming process, but that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Sometimes you you gotta go back and tweak it. Basically, this whole process involves tons of tweaking. That's why it's so time consuming. So now I'll come over here and check. What have I got? Okay, so you can see I don't have enough of a bend in this yet. It's getting there though. And this part of the leg is fatter then over here. See it narrows down. So I need to get this tail bent out so I can really get it up close here and see what's happening. Okay, so I've got my curve going this way, my curve going this way. I've begun the transition of the connecting the leg to the body. Um, all this probably seems really picky and um, like there might be an easier way to do it, but if I want to maintain all the flow and curvature I achieved in the framing process, this is, this is just what has to happen for the covering, for it to have that um, lifelike movement and not look like a stiff robot. So. Um, I'm just going to work away and let you guys watch for a little bit. And I'm going to turn on some tunes, too.
over. He raced the squirrel. Wow, wasn't, wasn't that compelling?